This is an excerpt from the Handbook of Prayers, homely delivered by Venerable Aloysius Schwartz to the sisters and students of Boys Town and Girls Town in Santa Mesa, Manila, 1989. Meditation on Prayer by Venerable Aloysius Schwartz Prayer is the raising up of one's mind and heart to God. It is a loving conversation with God. It is fundamental to spiritual life. It is the oxygen of the soul. If the body lacks oxygen, it becomes weak, dizzy, and eventually it dies. And so it is if the soul does not pray. It becomes weak, dizzy, exhausted, and eventually it dies. In prayer, we breathe God. God's presence enters our soul. His power fills our beings and steers within us the will to be good, to be holy, and to be like Jesus. In prayer, God steers up within us the will to avoid temptations, to resist the devil, to flee from every evil. The devil realizes the power of prayer, so he hates prayer. He does his best to keep us from praying. And if, despite the devil's efforts, we still go to pray, he follows us. He is always there to distract and interrupt us, trying to make us pray in an unworthy and lukewarm manner. In the Gospel, Jesus went to the desert to pray, and immediately the devil appeared to distract and tempt Jesus. Prayer is the first and the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, your heart, your will, and your strength. Prayer is most necessary in our life, and it is the best part. Not many things are necessary, but only one, and Mary has chosen the best part, and it will not be taken from her. Why did Jesus command us to pray? It is for us, for our own good, for our benefit. God does not need our prayer. Our prayer does not add to the infinite joy, happiness, and glory of Jesus. God is love and love is giving. So He loves giving His gifts, His blessings, and graces to His children. He wishes to give more than we wish to receive, but He is humble, and He will not pour His gifts and blessings upon us unless we ask for them. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. In prayer, we ask. Seek, and God joyfully answers it by His graces and blessings. By praying, Our lives acquire a new dimension. We become new creatures. We leave the earth and discover the world of God. We become as the angels. Our minds expand. Our hearts are enlarged. And we taste the sweetness of God. After the resurrection of the ascension, Jesus leaves the earth and slowly, majestically, rises to the heavens, and disappears to the clouds. This is what happens when we pray. We leave this earth, and lightly, easily, we rise above and we are lost in God. We are destined for God, and we are created for Him. And only if we are in God do we become fully what we are intended to become. Otherwise, our life is very incomplete and lacking. Let me give you an example. The duck and the eagle are both birds, but the duck is heavy and always remain on the ground, in the mud, or waddling in the pond. It rarely leaves the earth because it is too heavy, but the eagle is beautiful, light and strong. It rises above, ascends in the heavens, and alights into the peak of the mountains. It glides back and forth in a beautiful manner in the heavens. 
Which do you prefer to be, a duck or an eagle? Remember this, my children, you are created not to be fat little ducks waddling in the mud, but you are created to be eagles destined to rise above to explore the world of God. And you can do this by praying. How often should you pray? How long should you pray? The Carmelite sisters pray six hours a day. The sisters of Mary pray three hours a day. How much should you pray each day? What does Jesus say? He says, Pray always and never grow weary. Take care and pray constantly. Jesus does not tell us to pray eight hours or six hours, but constantly. I and the Father are one, which means that Jesus is always absorbed in prayer. In another place in the Gospel, it is written, As he always did, Jesus was praying. The question arises, How is it possible to pray always? We have to study, work, play, eat, and sleep. We must distinguish two types of prayer, formal and informal prayer, or the high-intensity and low-intensity prayer. This formal or high-intensity prayer requires concentration and effort. This is meditation, adoration of the Eucharist, spiritual reading, Rosary, Stations of the Cross. It is obvious that we cannot offer this prayer constantly. We don't have time, and this requires much effort and strength. Another type of prayer is informal or low-intensity prayer. This requires little effort. It is very light, easy, and refreshing. It is simply looking at Jesus with love calling his name with love, thinking of him, remembering his words, and feeling his presence with love. This type of prayer can be for all of us. We can practice this constantly. St. John of the Cross expressed this type of prayer when he said, I was always aware of a loving presence in my life. One who has this habit of constant prayer is always filled with the consciousness of Jesus. Let me give you this example. There is a young woman who falls in love with a young man. She has a crush on him. So, constantly, all day, without any effort, the thought of the one she loves arises from her heart. She sees his face, thinks of his words, and is aware of his presence. You can see a certain glow on her face, radiance in her eyes. People look and say, she is in love. We have a crush on Jesus. We are deeply in love with him. And so, naturally, the thought of God arises from our hearts. We are delighted to think of him, to call his name, and remember his words. This gives us a spiritual glow, a spiritual radiance, which changes and transforms our lives. St. Therese of Lycia said that never did more than three minutes elapse without the thought of God arising from her heart. She constantly thought of God. This is what we should try to do. My Jesus, I love you. My God, I believe in you. Mary, help me. Praying will become second nature to us. This is what it means to pray always, to pray constantly. It is important that our prayer be action-oriented, a dynamic prayer. We pray in order to do what pleases Jesus. It should not be like the pagans who repeat empty words. They don't practice what they preach. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. In prayer, we offer two coins, two spiritual pesos in the form of goodwill and effort. 
Jesus praised the poor widow who offered two coins in the temple. That is all she had and nothing more. Just like the poor widow in the gospel, we really want to pray and we do our best. That is holy and perfect prayer. Let us believe in prayer. Let us become men and women of prayer. Let us develop a habit of prayer. Let us offer the high-intensity prayer if we have time. Meditation, Adoration, Stations of the Cross, Rosary, Spiritual Reading. But constantly, easily, offer this low-intensity prayer, looking at Jesus with love, calling His name with faith, thinking of Him with devotion. Our prayer must be action-oriented and dynamic. To offer a perfect prayer requires only goodwill and effort. So, let us think of these things. Let us renew our resolution to pray as Jesus prayed, to pray always, to pray constantly.